Welcome to the Tune Show. I'm your host, MC Tune. I love to have fun promoting science and critical thinking. Often I do this by debating against flat earthers, anti 5G nutters, and other science deniers on my YouTube channel, MC Tune Live. And I also feature pre recorded videos explaining science in an irreverent way on my Conspiracy Tunes channel. Jump on YouTube to see them and subscribe while you're there. You can search YouTube for them or they're linked on my website at mctune.net. On this podcast, I feature some of the live debates I've done, as well as podcast exclusive interviews with Sciencey Smarty Pants guys. And the Sciencey Smarty Pants guy I have today is Craig from FTFE. Uh, Welcome, Craig. Sorry, what did you say my name was? Uh, Craig. I think you might may have the wrong person on the show. I'm not not sure, because my name's Craig. (laughs) That's what I said. Yeah, Craig. Oh, wait, did you say you're MC Tune? I just need to make a quick call to my yeah. agent. Uh, That's right. yeah. Hi, Kevin. Yeah, when you said I was going on a big podcast, I thought you meant like Joe Rogan or, or something. Who's this MC Tune? Yeah, you're fired. Uh, I right. guess I'll just do this. Yeah, hi, how are you doing? I'm Thank great. You for on. Hey, you're, you're the science smarty Marty Pants guy today. Uh, Apparently so. So Craig, or Craig, if you live in... in uh, <laughs> Scotland. It's hard to say. It, it's just weird. I live. I'm. I'm American. That's it. I speak American. Uh, Craig, <laughs> Craig uh, debates against flat earthers, and and uh, as as do I. So obviously we know each other. We we go way back. But uh, what? Give us a, a, a an introduction of how you stumbled into the amazing flat pizza land of flat earthers. Well, um, I, I'd moved to my new place, um, and I was kind of bored. I, I'm disabled, uh, you know, so I'm kind of stuck at home a lot. And um, I just on on Facebook, I come across a post about flat earth. And I was just like, "Don't be stupid!" And then one of my children bumped into one in real life, and then I looked more into it, and I was like, "This is a thing." So I started going into their groups on Facebook, and and I was just like, "Wait, are you guys actually serious?" and very quickly, I realized that they were more than serious. They were cult-like. You know, they were so obsessed that they were the ones that were the only ones in the world with this special knowledge that I just found it fascinating and hilarious. So I spent time in these groups, and what I found was the quickest way to get kicked out of the groups was to tell them they were wrong and why they were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't like that. They, they need uh, to cultivate that perfect echo chamber. Yeah. So after a while of just doing that on Facebook and it being a fruitless endeavor because, it, you know, they create the most incredible echo chambers. Um, I was showing my wife it all the time. And I'm going like, to look at this flat earth stupid. And she looked at me and she's like, look, you're smart. You've got degrees. Stop. I don't care. Stop talking to me about it and go and create a YouTube channel or something. So so I did. Um, and somehow it worked. Uh, <laughs> somehow it worked. Yeah. When uh, when was uh when did you create your first YouTube uh, video? For th- um, for this channel, um, it was uh, around uh, October two thousand eighteen, um, and I-, I just started the channel, and it was just about that time that Paul Logan was doing his epic troll with the flat Earth. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. So I did kind of a, a fake debunk of his flat earth introduction because it was quite obvious he was trolling them um they thought he was serious they were so excited oh, of course they did they were ecstatic apart from mark Sargent, of course who stormed out of the flat earth conference that paul logan was at because he was no longer the star <laughs> yeah so mark Sargent is is one of the uh the og papa flurfs um yes on youtube and uh, and flurf means flat earther it's it's a term of endearment that we use and Indeed. yeah, and and he he was unpleased that he wasn't the the big dog anymore at the 2018 Flat Earth Convention. Yeah, right. Uh, so Paul Logan turned up and did his oh, I'm coming out the Flat Earth closet thing, and the Flat Earthers were like, "See, we're mainstream." Yet everyone else in the world was laughing at them. Literally, everyone was laughing at them. Yet they were so ecstatic that this incredibly popular social media star. One of the biggest rising influencers in the world was was Flat Earth. But it was such an epic troll. And 
So, oh, it, it, you're gonna have to tell us what happened. What did he? What did? Uh, he so did. um he said he was gonna do a documentary, right? Paul Logan's like, right, I'm doing a flat Earth documentary, guys. I'm gonna expose the truth. And you start watching the documentary, and you know, for the first 15 minutes, you're like, yeah, it's it's the typical flat Earth, you know. Oh, everyone's lying to you, and that it's almost like he's being deadly serious. And then he talks to his friend, and they go out into the street. And his friend's got this big blow-up globe in the road with some toy cars on it. And he starts saying to Paul, see, the way that I knew I was, it was the Earth was flat, because if the Earth was a globe and you had a car on it, and he took his hand off the car and it rolled off the... You see, you would fall off the side. <laughs> uh, and then later on, they were talking about their friend, Flat Feet Pete, who fell off the edge of the flat Earth. Ah! I forgot never about be seen it again. Flat feet Pete. He was in Antarctica and fell off the edge. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it was just so, and just seeing how gullible the flat earthers were around this whole thing. Because even just before that documentary was coming out, and even as it was premiering, the, the flat earth world were like, we're mainstream. We've done it, guys. This is it. Paul Logan's taken us all the way. And, so, and in the end, in the end of the video, what's he do? Oh, he tells them that it's not flat. Yeah, and, and yeah. The, 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 it's it's like it's almost an afterthought. The 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 uh, yeah. It's like the the producer is interviewing him, and he, they're like, "Oh, well, what do you think about flat Earth?" He's like, "Oh, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard." It's the dumbest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but seeing how gullible they were, right, it made me realize that no matter how much I debunk them, it's not really going to matter. To they're them. still not no. no to them it's not so the only way to really do it is to have fun with it and yeah. and that's what i started basing my channel around you know i'm i'm quite ruthless with with my debunks and i just mock them because i feel like that's all it deserves you know the entire it, in flat earth is the internet's pet rock and there is never something to not laugh at with flat earth there's always some new stupid that blows your mind about how stupid it is and you're like can they be serious and yeah. yes yes they are yeah some some are um, not there's definitely a mix of people that are in there stirring oh, the yeah, pot, intentionally the making them look stupid and they're buying they're eating it up yeah there are people so, that make memes that flat earthers repost and it's obviously designed to mock them Absolutely. Uh, and they don't understand because no, they just see it as, oh, look, this is something for Flat Earth. And they've reposted it thinking that they've got a point. But it's all and wrong. Everything in everything wrong. they post debunks their own arguments. It, it's 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 it gets past the point of being funny where I, I sometimes think, wait, this is actually a bit sad. But then I remember that I was told by a flat earther that the moon was dug out of the Grand Canyon by giants melted into quartz uh, and then filled with helium whilst it was still cooling. That explains the craters and then put in the sky to mock us for worshipping the sun. Uh, the sun, by the way, um, it is an interdimensional portal that dilutes the light of God into our physical realm. All said 100% seriously. Yeah. And I was the stupid one for not believing this. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh! All right, so so you you do videos, but you also you, the, the a huge part of your channel is live debates against flat earthers. Yeah, um, and you've had of uh, several hundred debates, seven hundred and three now. Oh wow! Um, I didn't I didn't know you actually like counted. Uh, I lost count myself. I stopped counting a long time ago. <laughs> um, but <laughs> so. Of all of the, what well, maybe out uh, outside of the one you just cited, what's the most ridiculous thing you've heard in a live debate? Oh God! So there was a, a flat earther called "Why You Are an Idiot," okay, and his his thing about flat Earth was taking every possible religion and mysticism and you know, ancient tale, mashing them all into one and going, yeah, that's why the Earth's flat. Um, and there's there's two things that, that it's hard for me to separate, which is the stupidest that he said to me in that debate, right? 
I asked him why we've got a pressure gradient Be- because that's an excellent proof of gravity. You know, yeah. it, it it matches the predictions of what we expect gravity to do. It explains why the atmosphere is the way it is, right? Um, so I asked him, well, you know, if we're in a dome and gravity is not real, why is there a pressure gradient in the atmosphere? And he told me the reason there's a pressure gradient is because there used to be a giant tree in the middle of the earth, which I guess would be the North Pole, that stretched all the way up to the dome, right? <laughs> but the ancient humans that enslaved the world cut down that tree. And because that tree is no longer there, it's not producing oxygen near the top of the dome. So now there's less oxygen and air up there, which is why we've got a pressure gradient, right? And that almost floored me, right? But then we started talking about the moon. And in all seriousness, oh my, yes. he told me yes. that the moon was a giant wolf's chew toy. I, I didn't and know how to respond. He showed, he showed a picture of a used chew toy from a dog that, you know, like a, a plastic ball that's got teeth marks in it. He's like, it looks just like the moon, therefore the moon used to be a chew toy. <laughs> yes, yes. He, so He was not kidding. No, it's so wasn't. ridiculous. You're like, it, you can't be serious. But yeah, he was serious. This is the same guy that in his his videos before his channel was removed for a bunch of anti-Semitism and horrible stuff. Um, the majority of his videos were things like showing the tabletop mountain and going, that's clearly an old tree. Or showing a rock that's been split open and going, look, that's a fossilized heart. Yeah, and it's 12 feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> um, so sometimes the arguments that come out from these guys, uh, they floor me, right? And not, you know, if there's a simple argument like gravity's not real, it's buoyancy in density, you know, I've got a degree in physics, I can respond to that. But when someone tells me the moon's a giant wolf's chew toy, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> so the tree, just for reference, where did this idea from a tree come from? Do you know? Oh, it's the world tree from Norse mythology, as far as I could gather. Well, he he rolls he, it in with, yeah. with biblical stuff, too. Um, there's a, a guy had a dream in the Bible <laughs> that there was a tree. A dream. But he's like, right. for, forget that, that it's a dream. So it's a that dream real. tree from Norse mythology. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. That, this is why I said that when, uh, his entire thing is taking every possible religion and ancient text and mysticism of any kind and just squishing them together for some reason. And I'm pretty sure there's bits of like Marvel comics in there as well. Yeah. I, I'm positive. Definitely. <laughs> um, okay. When have you, in a debate, in a live debate, when have you been just stumped? Like you didn't know how to respond. <laughs> so there's the flat earther called Mallory. Um, I don't know if she's a real flat earther or not, but she's hilarious. She's, she's and so funny. She's the only flat earther that's ever beaten me in debate because she totally stumped me. I didn't know how to respond to her evidence that she gave me because, well, frankly, her evidence was very foot fetish porn and I broke. It was, it was mute. It was, she had asked friends to record their feet playing with stuff yeah. and put it to music. <laughs> that was and, your flat earth evidence. And played it and it's like, therefore the earth is flat. Um, and you know what? I had no rebuttal. Yeah. In right, the okay. slightest. I'm like, right. you know what? You won. It's, it's done. I'm a flat earther. <laughs> Oh, Mallory, Mallory is is a she's a special one. She has no, her own Discord server good. called Mallory's Asylum. Uh, it needs to be an asylum. Where yeah, it's an appropriately named, and uh, people people are given tasks. They have to do things, and they they do for fun, of course. But they yep. do them. <laughs> like you're muted until you you sing a song on on video. Um, okay. So yeah, I think it's but, uh, with, with, with debates, right? In the normal debates, they're not going to stump you because the majority of the flat earth arguments are the same things we've heard regurgitated and repeated a thousand times, right? 
So we've, you know, you, you and me and other debaters, we've heard this script. We can res- anything they come up with, we know the answer before they finish speaking because we've heard it a million times before. Yeah. So the majority of the time you don't really get stumped. The only time you really get stumped is when something incredibly stupid comes out, like the, the Grand Canyon Giants or the Moon Chew Toy or Furry Foot Fetish Point. You know, those are the times you get stumped. Um there there's sometimes I, stumped, that, that, that I don't think up... stumped is the right word though. No. It's no how do you respond to something so ridiculous? How do you yeah. put together the words? You have to assemble together some words in your head before they come out your mouth. That's yeah. a response to these things. And and how could you assemble a response to the moon is a giant dog's chew toy? It's just the only ridiculous. Ever time, the only other time that I feel like I could be stumped is when I don't understand the flat earthers argument. And that's usually because they aren't making it clear what their argument is and they're cherry picking so many different things and trying to put them together that you don't really have an idea of what they're on about to be able to respond. So, you know, you, you don't have a proper thing to say to them about it. And they take that as a, ha ha, stupid Glover, I've stumped you. And it's just like, no, I just, I have no idea what you're talking about because yeah. you've misunderstood the source material so much. You don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, and, and typically you go, you ask them for the citation, which they're typically hesitant to give. But once you look at the citation, which of course is difficult on the fly in a debate. Yeah. So you, you might have to look at it after the debate, but you look at it like, hold on a second. You didn't, you didn't even read this. No, you, you, you read you one picked, paragraph. Yeah, you found one paragraph that, that, and you think it says something other than it actually says. Uh, but when you actually look at the entirety of it, you're like, well, hold on a second. Here it talks about the Earth being a globe. Here it talks about gravity. Here it talks about the the rotation of the Earth in that same document. Well, you yeah. just contradicted yourself. It's like the classic um, Einstein quote that they pick up uh, where he's talking about the, the Michelson Morty experiment. And, and Einstein says that he's come to the conclusion um, that he, he doesn't believe there's any way to measure Earth's orbit around the sun using an optical experiment, right? And they stop the quote there. But the very next bit that Einstein said was, though the Earth is revolving around the sun. And then he goes on to talk about parallax measurements and things like that and how we know we're revolving, uh, you know, orbiting around the sun. And because they just take that first bit of Einstein saying, well, there's no way to measure it without really having any context behind it. If you're yeah. just shown that with no context and you've not heard it before, you're going to go, huh, and, right. And, and flat Einstein earthers say that? won't go look up the quote to try to no. understand it and comprehend it themselves, they'll say, oh, well, that supports me. Therefore, I'm going to accept it as as completely accurate when it's not. If all you had to done was just read the, the rest, it's not even another sentence. It's the rest of the same sentence. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's sometimes that the quote they show you, there'd be a full stop. But you go and look at the, the actual quote, and there's a comma there or something with yeah. something said afterwards. You know, yeah. they have to cherry pick to make things fit their narrative. You know, and they, they read a document from from NASA, which talks about gravity several times. But because it's talking about modeling something uh, over a flat Earth for simplicity, haha, NASA says the Earth's flat. You Globers lose. Wait, wait, you just spent an hour telling me how NASA lie about everything. Yeah, cherry cherry picking one part ignoring the other but even within the same document of course yeah they're they're yeah. this this isn't a measurement it's just something that they did as a simplification but they don't get it none of them are engineers there are no flat earth engineers that actually have to no. do anything uh, there's no flat earth cartographers there's no flat earth geologists there's no flat earth seismologists there's no flat earth Right. The list goes on of things that don't have flat earth in front of them for yeah. for things that people do, you know, that actually rely on the shape of the earth. People tell me that flat earthers should all work at McDonald's and stuff, but frankly, I don't want them cooking my food. No, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the best job for them would be to be a taste tester. You know, down at the uh, urinal uh, cake uh, factory. Yeah, yeah. A weapons plant or something, you yeah. know. A taste tester at a at a window factory. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely lickable. Uh, <clears throat> so what's the 
th this is a serious one. What's the best argument that they've ever made uh, for every or anything? Not not like satirical, not like just mm -hmm. something that stumped you, but actually like the best effort that they've ever put in. <laughs> there, there is no good flat Earth arguments, right? Um, the, however, there is or there were flat Earthers that put in effort to what they did. So th there was a flat Earther that spent a lot of time using his cameras and his own equipment, going out and doing his own observations at sea, um, you know, and trying to explain the observations he got, going back and checking over and over, doing an incredible amount of work. You know, he, he showed me his hard drive, but and it was like terabytes of, of videos and pictures um and he did all these experiments and observations and you know it was very impressive and you had to give a lot of respect to that and the the main outcome of all of this was that he's no longer a flat earther <laughs> uh, of course i'm talking about ranty flat earth who who was known as the globe earth hero because he was convinced the earth was flat right and he spent so much time doing observations that you know you you could respect it and even though everyone could see what he was showing was clearly a globe. Yeah, it didn't help but, the flat earth argument. It didn't like, help, but he was working so hard at it. And, yeah. you know, that was probably the best argumentation that I've ever seen for the flat earth, because he could almost give logical explanations for it with the twisted logic he was using, because yeah. he had to believe it. But, you know, he did all the observations himself, and eventually that that led to the fact that he's no longer a flat earther when there was an observation he could no longer say, okay, this works on a flat earth, you know, then he had to go back yeah. and critically think about everything he'd shown. Um, it was, it was the straw that broke the camel's back, right? He, yeah. he hit that one thing and he talks about that one, that one thing that really made him. And then he went back and re-examined the other stuff that he had done. He's like, yeah. oh, I missed it. He was yeah. so blinded. This is, this is a classic thing with flat earth. They're, they're blinded by the religion of flat earth. That they don't see that that what they're just looking at, the video that they're taking, actually destroys flat Earth. They just don't see yeah. it. So okay. then he came out of flat Earth, um, and you know what? Within weeks of coming out of flat Earth, he was a better person. He was healthier. He was happier. Um, he he told me how he felt like he he you know had a massive weight lifted off of his back and that how he'd realized the conspiracy thinking that he was so inclined to do had ruled his life. Um, and, you know, I speak to him regularly now, nearly every day, and he's such a nice guy. Yeah. Um, and that's the only time that I've been impressed with a flat earth argument is because of the amount of effort that was put in. And then they're not a flat earther anymore. Yeah. He went, he, he the, the, the reason things get obstructed bottom up as they go farther away from you, especially over the ocean and, and flat earthers have presented many different attempted explanations for it. But of course, none of them actually match with physics and reality, but there, there was a group of them and Ranty was in this group at the time that was claiming that uh, I don't know what angle of attack was the, the, uh, the buzz phrase of the day. And he actually went out, Randy, Ranty did live to a uh, uh, like a high school track, you know, and, and set. <laughs> I remember and the video. Set live, he set way down, you know, a hundred meters away. He set some things on the track, and then he, and then with his, it was his two camera, eggs, one Simon Dan, one conspiracy cats. Yeah, and and, and with the camera, then oh, like a hundred meters away, he's like, well, it's going to be obstructed bottom up. When I put the camera on the ground, he puts the camera on the ground and it's not. You could see it no. the whole way. He still posts it. Bless him. Well, it was live. He live streamed yeah, it. Well, yeah, that's right. Um, and it wasn't long before that that whilst live streaming, um, he got incredibly sunburnt and claimed it was the chemtrails. <laughs> Bless him, Ronnie. Uh, but he fully <laughs> admits that he had a conspiratorial mindset and he's really happy that he's out of that. Yeah. And in yeah, fact... Every person that I've spoken to that has come out of the flat earth is now happier. Yeah. Yep. And that there, it, it's unfortunate that for many people, it's a one way street. Mm -hmm. um, but the, you, the, the, the problem is you don't get to be a flat earther through rational thinking. So no. you're, they're unlikely to get out of flat earth through rational thinking. It's got to be something else that triggers them in, in most instances.
But then once yeah. once it clicks and they then they start thinking about it, they're like, oh, that didn't work. That didn't work. So yeah, there have there have been there have been a few um that have been kind of more well known. Um, but for the most part, I think the people that aren't well known are the ones that dabbled in it and then have left it. And they're not yeah. they're not out there, they're not doing YouTube channels. And they're not when they're when they leave it, they're not pulling in somewhere and saying, yeah, I was, I was into it for a while. I have gotten some emails. Some people have contacted me, you know, privately saying, Hey, I, I was in and I've watched your videos and yep. I'm out. And I'm like, Hey, that's awesome. Glad yeah, you're and that's it. That same, that's it. One email uh, interchange. That's it. I get quite a lot that are the same. Uh, and, and they mention me, you, Simon, Dan, Conspiracy Cats, Creaky, you know, Mr. Sensible. It's like, you guys have made me realize that I was just being stupid, you know? Yeah. Um, I asked Nathan Oakley about it, um, and he said this to me. Hi, my name's Nathan Oakley, and I have been lying to people about the earth being flat for a lot of years. I did this to hide the fact I have a small penis. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's his own words, you know? That's... Um, for those that don't know, Nathan Oakley is 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 a flat earther that hosts a daily show that he calls Flat Earth Debate. But he has a spidey sense to identify when a debate might break out, and he jumps in immediately to prevent it from ever happening. Yes. He does not allow debates on his Flat Earth no. Debate show. I think he titles it wrong. It should be Flat Earth Mass. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It, yeah. Because they, they've this... got their, their quotes at the beginning, you know, their their affirmations that they have to say. Um <laughs> it yeah, it's this back and forth where he has the the phrases that he says, and then he has a panel of people that have to respond in with the right words. And, and if, if they, they don't, don't like, <laughs> he will scold them, like, hold on, I just asked this question. Why are there crickets? You're supposed to be answering. <laughs> and what do you mean at the beginning? That's the whole show. Yeah, it's usually about 45 minutes of the housekeeping questions, as he calls them. And then there'd be like 20 minutes of discussion about something random. And then he'll finish the show um, whilst complaining that no one's sending him super chats to fix his thousand pound speakers. <laughs> he has high end stereo equipment. And this is the only thing he does for income. And it's not a lot. And no. so then, so then, when his high end speakers don't work, he has to do fundraising to fix his high end speakers. He could he, just he buy he, forty dollar earbuds. He says he uses those speakers. He has to have them because they're his monitor speakers whilst doing live streams. Um, so these things in my ear are my monitor speakers, and my live yeah. streams are a lot better than his. <laughs> so, and how much how much did you pay for those monitor speakers? About £7.50. Oh. Ooh, I feel <laughs> I feel a little little naughty mine were 40. Oh. $40. Which in uh, they were special on Amazon, a flash sale, I think, down from like 25 quid. I was like, yeah, I'll have some of them. Well, yeah, but just to be fair, let's see, hold on. $40 US is in pounds about three thirty-two pounds. Three pound and forty pence. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Something we have real close. money over here, not the Monopoly stuff you have. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't live in Canada. <laughs> they have the Monopoly money. Uh, <laughs> well, sorry, I love you Canadians, but come on, your money. You that's, a, that's a little village it's, in North America, isn't it? It's plastic. Their money is... All right, uh, I'll get a Canadian on and and uh, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll take them to task about their goofy money. Uh so all right what what else is there um they well, get um, mad so, they get mad they get tell, they get very mad in in debate so tell me about a a good time because they all oh, this is always so good when they get mad tell me about a good time when when somebody got mad at you in a live debate <laughs> there's so many um Oh God! So I, I debated a um, a lovely gentleman called Santos Bonacci. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, in, in fact, um, I asked Santos what he'd been doing today, and, and he told me this: "I'm masturbating." Oh, thank you, Santos. Yeah, that's that's very nice of you. This morning, I went to the toilet. Uh, okay, he's he's simple pleasures. Yeah, 
I mean, I think I'm stupid. I mean, I do agree, you know? <laughs> you know, I, I want to be a urinator. Well, you said you went to the toilet already, so, I mean... <laughs> sorry, anyway, so... Uh, not my mic over. <laughs> so I, I debated Santos Bonacci. Um, and before the debate happened, he sent me approximately 100 emails all extremely abusive, um, saying horrible things about me, about my mum, saying literally death threats towards me. Um, so at the beginning of the debate, which was supposed to be just between me and him, and for some reason he brought along a magical elf to help him. <laughs> you call me elf again, you're going to see, elf. you're going to see what's going to happen to you. Elf. Um, yeah, so... I started the debate by asking him why he thought it was appropriate to threaten to kill me and stuff. And he basically said, because I deserve it and I'm a horrific person and I'm horrible, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I asked him why he felt the need to bring someone else to the debate when it was just supposed to be me and him. And he got very angry at that. Anyway, so the, the debate got going and he, you know, he was saying a bunch of stupid things and I would debunk him. And by the end of the debate, he was so screamy at me. He was screaming like at the top of his lungs about how I'm the devil incarnate. I am evil. Uh, I am the pit of hell. I am, you know, the epitome of what is wrong with the world. That I'm convinced he broke his his equipment and ended the stream. <laughs> But I've I've never seen someone scream at me with such intensity about how evil I am because I was telling him that no I don't think NASA are lying no I do think gravity is a real thing and here's the evidence why um, yes I do think you're a horrible person Santos because you threatened to kill me and of course Santos is he puts himself across as a spiritual man. And he, he has like getaways where people come to have spiritual enlightenment and stuff. And yet he is one of the most horrific, nasty, vile human beings I have ever come across. And I've never felt so hated by somebody. <laughs> the, the amount of hate that comes out of Santos is, is yeah. staggering. Absolutely staggering. He is, he is, oh, he is a troubled individual. When um, I was a young boy, I grew up on the farm. I'm a, a country boy. And um, I used to f*** the cows that, that, uh, no, and the Santos. pigs. I used to f*** the pigs and the cows would come and I would pat them and, and look into their eyes. I mean, he, he obviously got issues, as it we does. can see. He does. Uh, and I, I mean, I don't know if it has something to do with being a, a three foot seven elf uh, himself. Um <laughs> <laughs> He looks like if Santa went on a crash diet and, like, you know, got some serious illnesses from it. If Santa Claus was in a gulag for 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> oh. um, but it happens often, right? Uh, flat earthers often get angry and shout at me, and there's been many debates that have, well, to be honest, the majority of the debates turning to shouting matches because the flat earthers don't want to accept that they're wrong. Um, and they also don't know how to have conversations. Yeah. Like when you're talking to Flyerford, they will want to say so much that they'll include a question in what they're saying that you feel like you need to answer, but then they go on keeping on with their with their nonsense triad. Uh, so you try to stop them. No, let me answer that question. And then they act like you've spoken over them because they won't shut the fuck up. And then it just turns into a shouting match be because now you've, you, all your communication is broken down. They're too dumb to realize that conversations sometimes involve a bit of back and forward and, yeah. you know, yeah. clarifications and that. And if they don't get to speak and get out their entire point, which usually goes on for about five years, then they get so angry. But the second you start speaking and start explaining to them why they're wrong, no, you're just lecturing them. Well, it's, it's not even their point singular. It's their many, many points, right? They'll ask a oh, question. Oh, yeah, they can't do one point singular. And they'll immediately, the next phrase, without even breathing, they're on to a next statement after the question that they're not going to give you an uh -huh. answer to. Um, and it's a totally different topic because every single piece of flat earth evidence that they claim is is super shallow. It's just a claim uh -huh. and then, and and that's it. A 
of one or two sentences is the the essence of their that's all that they know there's no evidence there's no research behind it there's no analysis of it there's and then it's another claim two sentences another claim one sentence another yeah. claim three sentences over and over and over they'll spit out over over one minute they'll they'll put out 12 claims thinking that this is proof to them yeah yeah the claim claims. is the proof and then, do you know how the best way to make a flat earther angry is ask them for evidence? <laughs> oh, so that's a lovely claim you've got there. Could you give me any evidence for that? You're reversing the burden of proof. How dare you think that I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. You just don't know what you're on. Why do you do your own research? Right, so you're not going to give me evidence for your claim? Oh, I'm not doing your work for you, stupid globe tart. I just want evidence that yeah. light is magic, please. Yeah, it's not it's not our job to pr- to prevent to present evidence for your claim. Yeah. It's not even it's not in a debate. It's not anybody's job to refute a claim that has never had evidence presented for it. No. In a debate, you don't actually need to do that in a debate. In a debate, you just say, "Oh, go ahead, present your evidence. You didn't. Okay, well then then I guess we can move on." It's just a claim. Yeah. Um, but if you don't refute their claim, they get really angry and take that as a yeah, win. They, yeah, they think it's a oh, win. So you can't debunk what I'm saying. Well, I, I don't need to. We know there isn't two sons. You know? <laughs> yeah. You want me to debunk the fact that there's two sons? Sure. Look outside. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it's just a claim. Yeah. Flat Earth. Just to say nighttime. There's Flat Earth debunked. Come on. Yeah, if, if the sun was up in the sky and the earth were flat the sun could never go away you'd always see it unless there are clouds in the way or you're under the dirt yeah and if you dig if you dig through the flat earth how far can you dig before you fall through and then when you fall through what happens they never i try keep trying to get that out of them Yes, it's a good question. Um, I mean there's so many questions about the flat earth that, that I would love answered you know, like, why can't I see the Eiffel Tower? And um, where where does the sun go at night? And why, if the sun is small and local, does it not get really hot at the top of Everest? Um, why don't pilots have to go around the sun? Um, why do pilots use the globe to navigate? Uh, why is there no accurate map for a flat Earth or any explanation for eclipses or, you know, any physical phenomena that we experience in, in the world? The list goes on of things that they cannot it answer. It does. <laughs> Typically, when you ask them, their answer is to deflect it to a different topic. Yeah, or say you're just a shill. That's a good one. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Here's the thing: I've been told by flat earthers so many times that I'm a shill, that I'm being paid to do this. Right? Is is there like a HR office I can talk to? I, mean, I feel like I should have a wage or something, you know? Yeah, it'd be I've good. been told hey, so many it. times that I'm getting paid for this. Is there a payroll department I can talk to about the wage I'm due? And, or And for you living in, in, in uh, not America, I don't know where, I mean, there's two countries. There's America and not America, right? Anyway, you live in not America and you speak not American. How is it that NASA, an American company, <laughs> They think you're a you're an employee. Yeah, NASA pay me, even though I guess it would be better if the European Space Agency were were paying me yes. because. Uh, well, I've just, I was told yesterday that the European Space Agency are NASA, and I'm dumb if I don't think so. <laughs> it's like you don't understand how organizations work, do you? No. I guess if, so if, it, is, is UPS also the uh, you know, the American Postal Service? Are they the same thing? Because they both deliver packages. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. I don't know when when they they don't get out of their mom's basement too often, so I guess they don't really know how organizational structures work. <laughs> oh my goodness! And did, we we jokingly say living in their mom's house, but the the one of the most well known flat earthers, Mark Sargent, literally lives in his mom's house. Yeah, it's either the mom's house or car. That's another one. Or with a wife that hates them. Oh. <laughs> That's a different story for a different day with CC. Chris from Westchester County. Um, yeah, well, that yeah, you've got the, the homeless flurf um, 
who like lives in his car, Mikey Smith in Canada. Um, you got many of them that live in their mom's house, like Mark Sargent or Trey Hutchinson, uh, or he calls himself Two Dollar Trey. Um, yeah, or Nathan Thompson who just uh, crashes on his friends' like, couches until his friends end up hating him because he's such a horrific person and kick him out. Yeah, yeah, he went. Yeah, he went to his his mom's house in California and stayed there a little while, and then she's like, "That's enough. You got to get, get out of here." You're. you're I know I gave birth to you, but. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> my duty's done. You're 35. Get out. I don't know. I don't know how old he is. Somewhere in there. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised he survived to adulthood. Honestly, I, I... for those not that don't know, Nathan Thompson is the flat earther that stood outside a school, shouting at the children how the Earth is flat, and when told to go away, he instead decided to throw flyers at them and then got arrested because he live stream a crime and put it on the internet. The best was the kid yelling at him. You're an idiot. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's really dumb because, I mean, he lives in America and you guys have pew pews. We have what? Pew pews, bang bangs. Guns? Yeah, those things. Like, you shout at the wrong person's kid, and you're ending up with a hole in your forehead. It, it doesn't <laughs> actually work that way. <laughs> Leave it to somebody in England to think. England, Scotland, same thing. I know they're not the same. Don't say that to Scottish, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've seen Braveheart, I know. And that's the 100% of the history about Scotland that I know. Yeah, William movie. Wallace didn't exist. Don't tell me that. I saw, like... on, I saw it on the big screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, so then oh, I Nathan... saw it on the big screen. Well, that's all right. Because do you remember the flat earth I told you about <laughs> earlier that told me the, um, the moon was dug out of the Grand Canyon by giants, right? Yes. So the same flat earther, with all seriousness, once told me that tennis is CGI. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. Whilst tell, watching a match of TV on tennis, he was convinced that this isn't real. This is somehow some CGI rendered nonsense. And the reason he was convinced that the live tennis that had real people in the crowd watching it was fake was so that the government can just get us used to seeing fake stuff so we think it's real. The tennis tune. He thought the tennis was fake. He's not the smart one. No, no, I, I call him Grandfather Dumbass because I thought he was an old man, but turns out he's only six years older than me. Oh, Flat Earth has not been kind to him. No. <laughs> it, it, yeah, to go back to when, when people leave Flat Earth, they're like, they get healthier. You know, if they were bald, yeah. suddenly they grow hair again. Hi. It's amazing. Yeah. Um. The C tennis is CGI just because, um, and by the way, that particular flat earther also, also sides with the, um, the Fuhrer in world war two, by the way. Yes. He's not a very, which, which is a, sadly a, a, an it's all a, too common uh, yeah. thing is that they are anti-Semites. They are side with the, the other, the other team for world war two. Yeah. Um, he he did, he did tell me that um, the Fury. He, he wasn't that so that a bad guy. He was just trying to help. I'm like, sorry, what did you just say? He's just trying to help. And and that's I mean, this is flat Earth Aussie Jesus we're talking about. He's he's a minor yeah. guy, but Eric Dubay, who it's it's Eric Dubay and Mark Sargent are two of the biggest flat Earthers. Eric Dubay in a song Big that idiot. he really put on his channel, and I can't I'm not going to quote it, but. He said the Fuhrer was a was not a bad guy, basically, in the song. It's a real song. It's not on his channel anymore. Understandably, YouTube doesn't uh, doesn't uh, want to have that on their platform. But he has it oh, on his well, other way. his on the, his other platforms. He has that song yep. up there still. Bagaki. 
I'm an idiot. I'm a stupid moron with an ugly face and a big butt and my butt smells and I like to kiss my own butt. I'm an idiot. Bagakin. Bagak. That that is um famous flat earther QE quantum famous. eraser. Well, yeah, yes. that's a pretty sloppy usage of the word famous. <laughs> he thinks he's famous. Oh my god, if you listen to his live streams, he acts like he is the biggest star in the world. There's 17 people watching. Woo! <laughs> I, the question to the question have i watched his live streams no no why no yeah so, true um he, oh. so I, yeah no one should watch his live streams um I, I, we actually you know i do that so you don't have to guys i, yes. I watch the live streams and debunk them He's so you don't specifically have to. trained to yeah. know how to do to watch these things to, to protect you we have protective measures uh, yeah. Right. You, you you move. What you do is you move all sharp objects out of the way. Anything hard, you you put foam padding over. Um, Make sure monitors are out of punching range. Yeah. Yeah. It it helps yeah. to to like have have oven mitts or or something soft. Well, I'm um, actually what I've done is I've upgraded to a full straight jacket. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So that the um, the reflex of hitting your face doesn't happen yeah, yeah. because um my doctor told me that um if i get too many more face palm injuries there's a likelihood that i will turn my brain to mush okay yeah you don't want that dane bramage no 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 that's really bad really really bad brain damage it's, it's oh <laughs> it, it is it is really difficult to, to some of these people to listen to their stuff they're so yeah. dumb so incredibly but they think dumb. they're so smart they, they think they're the smartest people in the world like let's take Dell for instance, um, Dell from uh, Beyond the Imaginary Curve. Uh, Dell thinks that he can debunk gravity, right? He'd take a football and he'd deflate the football and put dents in it and put it on the floor and then pour water on it and it'd be confused why the water isn't forming the shape of the ball <laughs> like the w oceans do on Earth. Missing a few um, things in there. Yeah, just so I mean, for reference, a football uh, in to to the to, to Craig. A football is a soccer ball. He's a little confused, but that's okay. He misses. He misses that the water did form to the ball. Some of it stuck and created yeah. a shell of liquid around it, in proportion deeper than the water of the oceans. Oh, way deeper! Yeah, completely missing that tiny little part. Because the, they're just the smartest people in the world, but, but they think that. Not only are they smart, but they're smarter than the smartest minds that have ever lived. You know, they're convinced that Einstein and Stephen Hawking and, and Newton were idiots. They're convinced that Neil deGrasse Tyson is just an actor, you know? And, and these are literally the smartest minds that live or have lived on our planet. And they're convinced, even though they struggle to tie their shoelaces and have to wear a crash helmet to go outside, that they're smarter than these people. You know, I, these the, are people that of... accidentally dig their eye out with a spoon when they're eating breakfast, and they think they're smarter than physicists. They've never done physics. They can't do math beyond addition. They can't count any higher than than ten unless they take off their shoes and socks. They, <laughs> and the number of times I've heard a flat earther make the claim that they they think that Einstein was not smart. How many times have I seen a flat earther make that claim? Like, oh, yeah. Well, then, when did when did you or somebody else show where he got it wrong? Nowhere. They'll just happily make the claim because in their world, they don't have to be held accountable for the things that they say. Yeah. No. Of course not. You know, other people, they're they, you know, at their jobs or something, they're like. You need to design something, and then somebody's going to use it. And if your design didn't work and somebody can't use it, well, that's going to come back at you, and your boss is going to say, well, you designed this, and it doesn't work. Okay, you might get yeah. away with it a little bit, but if you if every single time that you design something, it doesn't work, well, you're not going to be employed for long. That's what flat earthers do, though. Every single time that they claim something about how the earth works, they're wrong. Every time. Every yeah. time. And there's no ramifications for it because nobody's actually testing, right? There's no pilot that uses the flat earth map because no. if they did, they'd get lost and people would die every time and, and crash into mountains all the time. So, so and, there's, there's no ramifications. So anyway, go ahead. And, and the, the, the worst thing is 
what they expect with the standard of evidence. So they'll ask us to prove the globe, give evidence for the globe. And we've got to give evidence for the globe. Then we've got to give evidence that the evidence is right. Then we've got to give evidence that the physics behind the evidence of the evidence is correct. Then we've got to give evidence that the people that gave that evidence weren't in fact Freemason lizard people. So the evidence is actually able to be listened to. And then we've got to prove that every experiment done that's ever been done that proved the evidence was correct is also correct. But then we've got to prove that analysis is correct based on the math that we also haven't proved is correct, right? But when we get to them and we say, okay, so can you give me evidence for the flat earth? Well, it looks flat, doesn't it? <laughs> that's it. That's all they have. Look at this picture of the horizon. And you know what's, you know what's it, best? It, if you, you take that picture of the horizon, they're like, it looked flat, therefore flat. You take that picture and you actually analyze it to see if it's flat, and it's not. No. <laughs> it's not even it's flat. Not. I mean, it, it, it may be because of the ca camera adding, you know, but you know, because that's because when you're at when you're five feet above the surface of the of the ocean, you do not expect to see a, a left to right curve. If you no. did, that would be because you're living on so Super Mario Galaxy World where the radius of the earth okay. is actually 20 meters. Yeah. <laughs> but but in reality the radius of the earth is uh 6 is over 6000 kilometers. So you do not expect to see left to right curve when you're at the ocean. So saying it look flat therefore flat is not an in intellectual claim. To them it is, you know. To them. It is. Um you know and flyers don't tend to do experiments to prove, you know, anything to themselves. But to be fair, some do. Some flat earthers do do experiments, um, and then things like this happen. If the Earth is spinning at one rotation every 24 hours, that means that every hour it has to turn 15 degrees. And if the gyroscope is mounted anywhere on Earth, it's going to drift. In today's 21st century navigation systems, they're using what's called a ring laser gyroscope. It is extremely precise. If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. How much, Bob? A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> so yeah, some flat earthers do do experiments. But every time a flat earther does an experiment that's every time. proper, it shows the Earth's a globe that's rotating. Uh, Thanks, guys. That was that was that was Bob from um, Globe Busters. Good old <laughs> in the, Bob in, Nadell, in, not a pilot. In in the well, he's a pilot, but he's not a multi-engine pilot. But no, so, it's a single pilot rated, uh, single engine rated pilot that hasn't flown for thirty years and hasn't had a uh, medical to be able to fly for over thirty-five years. But he was he he was happy to lie about that, and in the uh, the write up for the 2018 Flat Earth Convention, oh yes, he was claimed yeah. to be a multi engine certified pilot. Of course, these are public publicly searchable databases. Somebody went and searched the database to find when he got his multi engine certification. In fact, never got one. And then somebody pointed it out to him, and somehow the website changed. Oh, amazing. But archive.org has the original. Yeah, so, way back in machine exists, Bob. Sorry. He can't he can't hide from that lie. So <laughs> and and lying, I mean that this is a good good opportunity. Lying is is fundamental to flat to earth. To flat Whether they're intentionally doing it or or just that stupid, doesn't really matter because a lie is a lie. So yeah. um what what's a can you give us a couple examples of the lies that they tell? The um well they have to lie about every video and picture that's from space. They have to lie and just say it's fake with no nothing to back it up. They have to lie about the experiments they do and what they show. Um they have to alter, literally alter pictures and videos to suit their narrative. Uh, and they get caught out on it. Um, Sleeping Warrior once got a letter that was a you know um, a hoax that was apparently written by Einstein. But it was a joke. Everyone knows it was a joke letter, right? Um, 
and it's got like Einstein stamps on it, and it's like written in English to a you know, from a German place to a German person, and it's clear that it's a hoax. But Stephen Moyer took this letter and chopped it up so that the hoax bits were missing and presented it as, ha-ha, evidence that Einstein is a liar and not actually good at physics, knowing full well that if he shows the full thing, it shows that it's a hoax. They have to lie. They have to misrepresent and misinterpret everything that they say because they have no actual evidence for what they say. Yeah, um... There's a, a a 2016 Blue Origin launch that went up to uh, I don't know over over 60 miles I think or 100 kilometers about, and uh, Flat Earthers took that video, which was with which uh, a camera that had strong barrel distortion, so it added curve, and so so looking at it, you'd say, well, that's that's not great evidence because the curve is is from the the lens. So you don't know how much is real and how much is lens. But they took that video and instead of just saying, well, that's let's not, I, I won't accept that. They said, let's flatten out the horizon. So they intentionally flattened the horizon at the, at the peak of the flight, intentionally lying about it, claiming that this was, you know, super high and it proves because it was flat, but it wasn't. It was intentionally manipulated. And we see that a lot. Yeah. Uh, it, anything that a flat earth presents can't be taken at face value. You have to research research it, and nine times out of ten, you'll find out that it's either doctored or you know completely cherry picked in some way. Yeah. So it's just and ha- there is you've flyer. done that ahead of time so that when when they present it in a debate, because a lot of the you know the the ground soldiers of flat earth they don't they aren't aware. Of these things so they'll they'll bring up the same nonsense that somebody did last week because they're not even smart enough to watch you in the debate that they're going to have with you tomorrow to see yeah. to, to see if you're gonna people do a little research about who you're about to debate or don't please don't it makes it more fun Our friends don't do research so all right well uh craig there we go where can people find you if they want to watch some of these live debates? Well, you can find me on YouTube, my channel, FTFE. Um, uh, every Monday, um, I do a particularly fun debate where I go into a Discord for- server full of flat earthers um, and make them very angry just by existing. That's always a good one. Uh, I host regular debates with um, random flat earthers that I find on Facebook and TikTok, you know, just whenever they happen to come along. I uh, also do regular scripted videos. Um, my breakout series, Flurfs Are Idiots, um, is is probably my biggest series that I've got where I, I take the individual claims of specific flat earthers and break them down uh, in a, a humorous and irrelevant way. Um, and the best way to, to find me is to go to youtube.com forward slash FTFE1. It would be slash FTFE, but someone had that before me. <laughs> Or you can just search FTFE on YouTube as well. I will put in the video description on YouTube your uh, link to your channel. So if, if you're listening Thank to you. this uh, audio podcast, you can find this video version of it where you can see our our lovely faces. I'm doing air quotes around lovely. Uh, oh, uh, I'm uh, <laughs> you what? I said I'm gorgeous. He, okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> No, I won't. Anyway, um, on the Tune Show, it's just called to actually just Tune Show on YouTube. You'll find it there. You can find all the links to my stuff on mctune.net, including the link to this. But I'll def I'll put a link to your channel, Craig. Um, anything else Thank as you. we head out here? Um, yeah, if you are intending to watch any of my stuff, it is advised that you bring some form of face palm protection. Um, normally other mitts are suitable, but lately the dirt has been so intense. I would advise, um, duct taping pillows to your hands. That's a good idea. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to see this podcast, find it on, uh, on YouTube at the tune show. And if you like the, the, the podcast and want to support what I do, head over to patreon.com slash MC tune. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time.